and in this consciousness, please let me welcome our beloved Reverend John to the podium to deliver this message of love. Thank you, Reverend, and good morning, family. It's Christmas already. Where did the year go? <laughs> A joy to welcome you all and to welcome those who join us in consciousness on the World Wide Web. There is a song in the air and there is a, a cool breeze blowing over the Blue Mountains and it's just such a wonderful time of year. There's a, a difference to the light and there's just such a, a feeling of holiness and crispness and loveliness all around us. And since we started <clears throat> off the season of gift giving with yesterday's lively everyday Christmas fair on the lawns right here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living in beautiful Jamaica, I would like to share one young man's experience which may help you with your own gift selections this Christmas. I don't know how true this story is, but I got it from a, a dear friend um, who supplies me with things he, he thinks I will find amusing and interesting. You see, the young man lived in New York and wanted to purchase a Christmas gift for his new sweetheart. And as they had not been dating very long, after careful consideration and deliberation, he decided a pair of fur-lined gloves would strike the right note. Romantic, but not too intimate and personal. So accompanied by his younger sister, he went to a, one of those high-end stores in New York and bought the pair of gloves. His sister bought a delicate undergarment with the brand name Somebody's Secret. Well, during the gift wrapping, the overworked clerk mixed up the items and the sister got the gloves and the sweetheart got the Somebody's Secret. Now, she had gone to Boston to be with her, her, um, her grandmother for Christmas, and he wanted to be sure that it, the gift got there for Christmas Day, so he didn't open it and check it. He just mailed it off without checking. Off it went to Boston with this little note. Dear my heart, you know, when young men are in love, they wax poetic. I chose these because I noticed that you are not in the habit of wearing any when we go out in the evenings. If it had not been for my sister, I would have chosen the long ones. But she wears short ones, and she assures me are easier to remove. <laughs> they, these are a delicate shade, but the sales lady showed me a pair that she had been wearing for the past three weeks, and they were hardly soiled. I had her triggers on for me, and they, she looks very, very smart indeed. I wish I was there to put them on for you the first time, as no doubt other hands will come in contact with them before I have a chance to see you again. But I console myself by thinking how many times I will kiss them during this coming year. I hope you will wear them for me on Christmas night. All my love, Gary. I don't know what the upshot of that story was. I don't know if the romance continued. But I love giving gifts. And when I was younger, I would expend a lot of time and energy, and not to mention money, uh, obtaining the perfect gift for the people whom I love. And I had a similar experience to that young man, but not with not quite such disastrous um, results. You see, I had an aunt who gave me a pair of plain socks and five shillings every year. And one year, when I was about 10, I pocketed the five bob and gave the socks to my playmate next door. Well, on Christmas night, he brought them back and said, you gave me the wrong gift. This one has a tag from Aunt Tiny. <laughs> Cured me of passing on gifts. But my friend, the real reason for gift giving is the representation of the givingness of God to each and every person. What a wonderful gift, the gift of the spirit of love and joy and laughter that we feel especially at this time of year. Now if you were, as the master said, to love your neighbor, and that is the, that's the assignment, eh? Love your neighbor. Simple. And the second commandment is as, like unto the first one, to do what? 
No, the first one is to love what? God. God. And the second is to love your neighbor. Now, to love your neighbor as yourselves, you first have to give, get used to the idea that you are divine. That the same angel song that, that rang through the atmosphere at the coming of the birth of Jesus, those same songs of joy sing at your coming and just fill the atmosphere of life and of, of your everyday living with the, with the song of hope and joy and goodness that you bring when you give the gift of yourself any day and every day and particularly at Christmas. So I've, I've entitled my encouragement this morning, The Gift of Self. And I've been thinking a lot about that because it is the most precious gift you can give anyone. You will agree. And so I want to give you your assignment right away up front this morning because the big gift that I want you to consider giving this Christmas in giving the gift of self is the gift of forgiveness. So just sit this afternoon, if, should you decide to undertake this assignment, and consider anyone who has hurt you or who has, you know, left you feeling less than your magnificent self, to call them by name and just say, I wish for you the glory of the season, for the Christ belongs to everyone. I forgive you. Can we say that? I wish for you the glory of the season, for the Christ belongs to everyone. I wish for you the glory of the season, for the Christ belongs to everyone. Say to your neighbor, I wish for you the glory of the season, for the Christ belongs to everyone. So my friends, over the season, you will no doubt hear many times, and I hope we'll have it at our Christmas concert on the 21st, the immortal and beautiful O Holy Night. We hear it many times over the, over the, the holy season. And I want, when you're listening to it this year, to remember that those angel voices represent your highest thoughts. Those angels are really your highest thoughts. They're messengers of the truth of who you are. God incarnate and sent to earth to make it a place that works for everyone. That full inn where Mary hoped to give birth represents our full egos which have no room for this new childlike though royal notion of truth. We're so busy with who we think we are and um, all of the trappings of materiality we forget and there's no room in that inn for the humility and the beauty and the gentleness of the Christ child. And you must remember that the Christ was not a person. Jesus was the person. The Christ is the notion of your godhood, the principle of your sonship and your daughtership with something so divine and so beautiful. No wonder all of creation sings at the very thought that you are a part of it. And it wouldn't be the same without you. We are all here fulfilling an amazing assignment. And that assignment is to love the Lord our God with everything in us and to love our neighbor as ourself. So in giving the gift of self this Christmas, I want you to give the gift of forgiveness. You ever wondered why Jesus came at the time he did? I used to ponder about this a lot when I was a, a young man. Why did he choose that time? Why didn't he come? No, God knows we need it now, you know. Um, as somebody said, Reverend John, you need Jesus. Yes, we all need that notion of the Christ, that notion that we are indeed on a holy assignment to change the world and to make it a better place. Jesus came at a time when there was a lot of separation, a lot of duality in human thought. And if you remember, the Holy of Holies in the temple was... was curtained off so that only, only the high priests could, be, could go behind there um, where the Ark of the Covenant was enshrined. And if you remember the story of the crucifixion at that hour when Jesus is said to have surrendered his, his spirit, the veil of the temple was rent in twain. And that is symbolic of Look, it's open to all people. It's no longer a holy of holies. That's the, the, the purview of only a few select people 
all may come, all are welcome, and no one is denied. Absolutely no one. Isn't that just an amazing concept that you in all of your beauty and all of your wholeness and holiness, you, everything about you, is welcome in the Holy of Holies, which is the, the inner sanctuary where God dwells in human hearts. And I just want you to think this Christmas as you hear that, O oh Holy Night, that this is your song. It is your anthem. It is who you are and what you are here to do. And that angel song is really celebrating you and yours. Now, you know, I, myself and Reverend Michael and Reverend Anne and Carol Charlton are doing the uh, Change Your Thinking, Change Your Life program in the correctional institutions here in Jamaica. And this week, there is great excitement in the mail facility on Tower Street in Kingston, because on Tuesday this week, 18 participants will receive their certificates of participation in the 12-week program. And for many, I want you to know this is the first time they have received a piece of paper for succeeding at anything. Uh, actually, you know, I just think, think I had a big, burly, brusque man just hold that paper and ball. I said, don't wait up my paper, it's parchment, and it cost me a whole heap of money. <laughs> he said, you know, this is the first time I ever stand up and get a piece of paper with my name on it. And he said, read it for my reverend. I said, no, you read it for me, because you have earned it. And so this past Tuesday, so this Tuesday coming, um, and the other wonderful, exciting thing is that the following week, they will have an opportunity to share those certificates with their loved ones because the prisoner has what is known as a family day. And they're allowed for the one time a year to actually mingle with family, hold their loved ones, hug the children to their breasts. It's, it's really a very, very meaningful time for them. And they will carry those certificates and show them what they've been doing behind those forbidding walls. So I said to them last Tuesday, get into groups of three for me. It's 18 of them in the group. So six groups of three. And I said, I want you to tell me to write down, one person in each group writes, the one person that writes best, write down what it is that you could give as a gift this Christmas to your loved ones. And of course, the first reaction is, we don't have nothing, you know. And I said, no, 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 just think about it. What could you give? And I want to share with you some of what they came up with. It's amazing, this list. The gift of listening. The gift of listening. And one of them said, but you really have to listen, you know. So often we just are talk, 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 and we don't take time to listen to a woman them. Wow. Another group said the gift of affection. And this really touched me. We mustn't be afraid to show it to our boy children as well. And many of them were sharing. I never was hugged by my father. I never knew what it was to be, to be hugged and, and loved by the man in my life. The gift of laughter. And this one of them said, you know what I do? If I find any little cartoon that I like, I clip it and save it for family day so I can share it with them. Isn't that wonderful that you can share the gift of, of that even in a place like that, there is joy and you can, you can share the laughter that comes, however infrequently, to your heart with those that you love. And those that are literate, the gift of the written note. Write them a note and just say, thinking about you and love you. Don't worry about the spelling. Just write the note. The gift of a compliment. Boy, babes, you really look nice in the red dress. And you know, I say, one of my friends in a red frock down the back there too. Boy, you really look nice in the red dress. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's the gift of recognition. The gift of a favor. This one is interesting for me, the gift of solitude. Coming from people who are incarcerated. He said, you know, sometimes your peeps want a little me time, a little time by themselves, love them. Maybe you could, you could, when you get home, when you get out, offer to do some of the chores, start the dinner or, or hang out the washing so she can get a little time just by herself. And finally, and this one blew me away, 
the gift of a cheerful disposition. I'm trying to work out in my own heart and my own mind how you find cheer, not, not only cheer, but joy under those circumstances. But I want you to know, and I think Reverend Michael and Reverend Anna and Carol will bear me out, they, they carry a deep inner joy, those that have found it. And there is something different about the way they relate to other people in there and to their, their officials and to each other. You can sense that deep, deep, deep inner peace. And of course, you have a lot of time, several hours a day being locked up, to think about that. And really and truly, the gift of self. You know, one of them said to me, well, what you get out of coming here? You get paid? I said, no. And the church gets a, a, an honorarium. Um, but I don't get paid anything. She so said, why do you come? I said, because I get a joy out of seeing you awaken to the truth of who you are, a magnificent son of God. And you can see their body language. When we did that wonderful leadership course with, with um, Andre Nemhard, we talked about the leadership body. They actually straighten up, you know, in, from being like this, to, to straightening up when they say, when you say, you are a son of God and I honor you. Good morning, Godson. And Godson takes on a new meaning. And when they can share that gift with their other comrades in there who haven't had a chance to come on the, on the program, I, I remember what Andre said to us. We are doing the leadership program, but it's not just for us. We are, it, it's exponential. You share what you have learned out in the world. And as you be yourself, other people are inspired to be themselves. In John 1.14, you know, my friends, we read, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. John was, of course, referring to the Christ did Jesus, the Jesus who discovered his and our sonship with God. And as I said, Christ is not a person. So we too, like Jesus, must make the great discovery of our sonship with God and understand that the ideal of the Christ, and we don't have to wait for a soul of Tarsus experience, you know, blinding flash of lights. The Christ really comes into our consciousness very quietly and, and silently a lot. That lovely hymn, that lovely carol, Silent Night, is one of my favorite for that reason. Silently the gift is given, and we can equally give the gift of ourselves to other human beings, silently and reverently, as we recognize the Christ in all people. And so over the season, as you wrap each gift, I want you to first check to ensure that what you think it is is what you think it is. <laughs> and then affirm for the recipient, thank you for the gift of yourself. My prayer for each of you is that you will recognize and live from a deeper understanding of the powerful principle of the Christ indwelling as you share the gracious gift of yourself with your world, with your family, your friends, and the wider community. Let us say together, my life is a reflection of all that is beautiful and joyous. That's a line from Sandra Cooper's wonderful treatment. My life is a reflection of all that is beautiful and joyous. Together, my life is a reflection of all that is beautiful and joyous. This is my gift to the world. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. And can we have that on the piano? Gloria.